So the nation's largest school district back to school today. Over one million students here in New York City returning to the classroom. One day after that deadly shooting we were talking about at the high school in Georgia, and we have the NYPD's Deputy Commissioner of Public Information, Tariq Shepard, here with me in our studio in New York. I want to talk a little bit about what's being done to keep those one million plus students safe, not only because of what happened in Georgia, but it would be a concern anyway. You guys spend a lot of time on that, I would suspect, this yeah. time of year. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad we do. You know, my, my little guy just started pre-K today, so I'm mm -hmm. very connected to the first day of school. Um, but some of the things we do, obviously here we have our school safety agents. We do active shooter training. Right. Uh, the DOE has partnered up with us in that and doing, in, in doing that training. Uh, we do screenings at some schools. Is That's it tougher in, in the city versus maybe a suburban area or rural area? I know, like, you, you try not to put classrooms on the first floor, I was seeing. Some of those city, the, the thing in Georgia, they have a whole complex, right? And they mm -hmm. had the preschool and the middle school. But in the city schools, sometimes you have multiple schools in one building. Right. You have charters sometimes in a building, multiple schools in so a how building. How do you handle all that? I think at the end of the day, it's about coordination. Um, yeah. and, and the school safety agents are a great resource. They make great relationships with the kids. They get great relationships with the faculty. Right. They're a wealth of information. They're NYPD. Uh, they are NYPD. They are, they are not armed. They are civilian. But they are, they are our eyes and ears in the schools. We do have our field intelligence officers in precincts that are armed intelligence officers that work with them, but they also have intelligence officers who are civilians that work with Any US. technology like they had in Georgia where they have the ID and you can press it as a panic button type of thing? Or? I'm not sure about that. I know we do a lot of training together, and they all equipped with their radios that, that right. go right over the PD frequency if they, need, if they need help in an emergency. And one of the things that is different about New York is the response time. We have 35,000 uh, cops here. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of other agencies that's in the area if we needed help, federal and state agents, uh, state officers that's in, in New York City at any given time. And so uh, our training is, you know, if something happens, we will go right in. Um, and, you know, we just prepared for, for anything here. But, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to prevent everything. I know. You know, speaking of prevention, I, I do want to get your take just as a police officer on the Georgia story from this perspective. The New York Times headline we'll put up. We talked about it earlier in the show, but this... 14-year-old in Georgia was previously interviewed about online threats. As it says there, they said he denied making the threats. His dad told the investigators they had hunting guns in the house, but said his son did not have unsupervised access to them. So th this is when he was 13. Right. So, right. but there, I get y you have to have probable cause, right? To yeah, go absolutely. Further? Well, first of all, we're talking about a minor. Yeah. Um, not much you're going to do there legally, but also, you know, what do you really have? Do you have a crime? Uh, do you, and if you do have a crime, what's the penalty? Uh, I don't think that uh, there's mu much more they could have done. Mm -hmm. um, how much resources are you going to dedicate to constant surveillance to one kid for, what, two years straight? Uh, there's no way to know that today he's going to wake up and go do this, even if he manifested it two years ago. I know. You know uh, uh, it's it's still a tough job. A tough it, job. And, right. and what you got to hope is that we continue to educate parents on what to look for, signs. What about holding parents responsible? Listen, that's, that's going to be up to each state legislature to decide, maybe federal uh, statutes to decide, if that's possible, Supreme Court. But, um, you know, you also feel for parents sometimes. It's not just that they, I'm sure they feel for these victims. They don't want yeah. this to happen. But you are responsible for your child. And that's something that has to be you know, adjudicated and, 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 and see where we go from there. Now, one other issue on, on schools, the cell phones. We've had this, I think you and I maybe have talked about this a little. We've talked about it a lot on the show. There's a headline about it, about New York City phones in the schools being banned by some uh, schools. This is from our friends down the hall here at PIX11, our News Nation station in New York. They say there's no citywide policy for the for the students in New York, uh, but about 400 schools making their own rules this year. The Department of Education and Mayor Adams view the patchwork of rules as a grand experiment to find the best ideas. So there's a couple sides to this too, because I know you know cell phones can be an issue, but then on the other side, we were talking about safety. Right. A lot of parents say, you know, I need. Uh, I don't feel right if, my, if I can't get in touch with my child. Right. Well, well I must, look, the chancellor, I saw him on earlier on a couple of networks, I'm sure he knows more about what the rules are in schools in regards to phones. But my assumption is that we take the stance that the schools are safe, right? And so that thinking that way, that we're going to keep the schools safe, they're trying to, you know, limit phone access for right. educational purposes, knowing that, hey, we have our school safety, we have the NYPD keeping them safe. And we hope that they don't have to use these phones in a classroom in emergencies. But it is something uh, to be concerned about. 
and something for us to sit at the table and talk about. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.